name's uh, Dr. Nigel Hussey, and I'm a postdoctoral research fellow at the University of Windsor. And my main focus is on elasmobranch biology, which is uh, sharks, skates, and rays. And I uh, principally look at the movement and the trophic ecology of these uh, of different shark species in both uh, Arctic and tropical waters. We are currently in Clyde River in, uh, in about mid-Arctic. Yes, uh, Samuel Incavedo. Okay. And you live here on Clyde River? Yes, I was born here by the Irish Arctic Civic Society uh, Center. Okay. How old are you? 35. 35. Yeah. So, so what do you do here? I'm, uh, I'm building supervisor at the uh, New Cultural School. At the Cultural School? Yes, okay. call it a Percoso de Revi. Like it's a good life because uh, uh, we used to, uh, we grew up here in the north. Okay. Yes. So, so one of the reasons, like these scientists are here, and one of the one of the things they're doing is that they're tracking the the migratory patterns of certain types of fish to see where they go. Yes. Ultimately, they want to they want that information so they can use it to help establish more commercial fisheries. Okay. Do you so, think that would do you think that would be good for your oh, community? Oh, that would be very good. That yeah. would be a very good opportunity, mm -hmm. opportunity to have for this community because uh -huh. uh, there's not much of a job available in this community. Yeah. Is so it hard for young people who are living here? Oh, not really. No. No. Is it like? Do they have jobs? Do they have things uh, to no, do? No, this is about what? Maybe thirty-five percent of this community people works, got do a they? job here. Okay. And the rest are they on their welfare? Um, my name is Kevin Hedges. I'm a research scientist with the Department of Fisheries and Oceans. I'm part of our Arctic Stock Assessment Group, so I do research in the Arctic in support of existing and emerging marine fisheries. Uh, my office is in Winnipeg, but I'm currently in Clyde River, and we're meeting the research vessel Nuliayuk, which is owned by the government of Nunavut, and we're going up to Scott Inlet, so it's a short steam north, and we'll be up there for a little over a week. We've been here for two days waiting for the boat to arrive. This is our second day at the moment, and uh, the boat hopefully should be moving this evening. is here in the background. Uh, it's just uh, come through the passage and it's about to drop anchor for us over at this, uh, this station here. So the, uh, we've got a direct line for the boat to uh, come in and approach us and to carry our equipment. As you can see here on the right hand side we have our very sophisticated equipment including the uh, guitar on the top which obviously will assist all our research activities while at sea. <laughs> Commercial work on tow boats and that around the Great Lakes all around Northern Mary A lot of work in Hudson Bay and Labrador boats and so on and down the eastern seaboard. But predominantly around the east coast of Canada where I've worked on most of my work over the years. And it's all the same principle. I guess the only thing you need is uh, some of the, the gear that we have on board is a little bit more advanced than we would see on some of the commercial boats. That, sonars and sounders and scan wires. Some of the work we're doing is a little different than scientific work, but very interesting and seems to be a very good operation going on here. It seems to be pretty good. The new government has the, has the crew and everything here and the, starting to get the bugs out of everything and all the scientific and seems like things are starting to fall in place that will be Hopefully some real good data got for the future for the fishery or I guess the data being collected is for a little bit of everything to know what's happening in the north. My name is Melanie Van Gerwen. I'm a biologist with Fisheries and Oceans Canada based out of Winnipeg, the Central Antarctic region, a stock assessment biologist. And my general responsibilities are to monitor fisheries and provide advice to fisheries management about uh, populations and their quotas and such things like that for management to make decisions on. As stock assessment we provide advice to fisheries management. On this trip right now we're, I'm interested in the bio biology of the Greenland shark. It's 
Uh, very little is known about this species in general, and it's caught quite often as a bycatch in the Greenland halibut um, fishery, longline fisheries. So it's a concern that it's a bycatch of a commercial fishery, and very little is known about the species. So on this um, research survey today, my focus is to document um, little sharks. Uh, the ones we're expecting to catch are about one meter long, which is significantly shorter than the ones that are caught, um, for example, in Cumberland Sound. So the idea today is that um, these little guys are possibly newborns or only a, a couple years old maybe and very 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 little is known about those guys so I'm hoping to document some of the biology on these little guys and the habitat that they're in the depth of water they're swimming in the temperature and that type of stuff That's the best way. In the Arctic, our principal focus with the Ocean Tracking Network is to look at the movements of uh, commercially important species. And one of those in the Arctic, or the principal species in the Arctic, which has a real potential for fisheries in the future, is the Greenland halibut. And so our main aim with the Ocean Tracking Network is we use both acoustic and satellite telemetry. Acoustic telemetry is where we fix uh, bottom monitors on the seabed. And these monitors are basically ears that listen 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 365 days a year. And they listen for tags that we insert internally into fish and sharks and tell us if the fish and sharks are in the range of these monitors that we deploy. Yeah, let it go. What? Do we let it go? Yeah, this is my first time on a research vessel. Any other boat I've ever been on has been for fishing. Uh, I've enjoyed a lot just to learn how other people, like say about what these other people that have been coming on board are researching and that, like there's been a number of different groups and they're all good people that I meet and it's, I find it interesting to try and understand what they're doing, you know what I mean? Like, like Kevin and, uh, and Ellie and and Mel there, like it's it's nice to see what what they're doing there, you know what I mean? Like researching the sharks and the turbine. I like just just to learn new things is good. So we went up to Scott Inlet, is that the furthest north you've ever been? Yeah, that has been the furthest north. Yeah. What'd you think of that? The, the whole scenery up there? Oh it was beautiful. Like <clears throat> I noticed that everybody every opportunity they had they took a picture. You know, and it was like Every everywhere you looked, there was a photo opportunity. You know what I mean? Like it was some real nice scene. The uh, Greenland sharks are probably one of the most unknown Elasmobranchs uh, shark species. We know very little about it, typically because of the environment it inhabits. Obviously, the Arctic is a very harsh environment. Uh, logistically, very difficult to work here and to try and study these species. Um, the Greenland shark. Um, is we expect, we don't truly know at the moment, a very long-lived animal, which is a typical trait of many shark species, has produces very few young. Um, so therefore, if you exploit that particular species, um, you can have devastating consequences over a very short period of time for the population. And what we find is in the fisheries that are developing at the moment in the Arctic region is they have an extremely high bycatch of Greenland shark. In fact, if you look to the actual mass, in terms of the mass of the catches, um, there's probably a greater biomass of Greenland sharks as bycatch caught rather than the actual target species, the Greenland halibut. So, so we have um, two established fisheries for turbot in the north, so it's Greenland halibut, same species. 
Uh, we have an offshore fishery and we have a fishery in Cumberland Sound. A lot of communities also have expressed interest in developing commercial fisheries for it. So that's part of why we're working here is in support of Clyde River's efforts to, to establish a turbot fishery somewhere close by. And they've done their own test fisheries in two winters in, in Scott Inlet. So we're going back to the location. We were there last year for, again, about a week just to do some very quick testing only with long lines. So it's um, part of it's, you know, what's there? Is there a reasonable abundance? Is it worth them um, cranking up their effort a little bit to, to really try the fishery? Overall, the uh, expedition's gone very well, considering we had a couple of days where we were, we were put off by the weather, um, which wasn't too good for doing what we needed to do. And obviously that's always the problem we've got these sort of expeditions, particularly in the Arctic area where, you know, you're, you're always going to have to rule out days. But overall, yeah, we did very well. We got the sharks in inside Scott Inlet, which was great. Um, it would have been good if we could have got a few more of the little ones, but we did get one of the uh, small ones, which was fantastic, absolutely fantastic to see. Um, you know, it was the first time I've ever seen one of those. They're very rare, documented. So it was very good to actually see one of those little animals and shows they must be around if it's the second year in a row that they've been caught. The other sharks we caught were typically a bit bigger. They are normal size that we, we typically see when we fish, sort of between two and three meters long. But tagging went great. Three were satellite tagged, which, um, and they all swam off beautiful. We had an absolutely fabulous day. Very calm, very clear water, the sun shining. So it was nice to see those sharks swim off as well in good condition. So overall that went very, very uh, smoothly. High fives all the way around. No high fives, nothing. Well done. Well done. Well done. Just gonna be fun in the middle here, huh? Exactly. Excellent. Thumbs up. Thumbs up, buddy. Good job. Everything is A-OK. -okay. Let's go home. Yeah, let's go home.